In this video, we're going to look at how to do a simple univariate time series prediction using only convolution neural networks. Later videos will put in seasonality and other things that will give us a much more accurate prediction, but for now, let's keep it simple with just a univariate prediction. Let's real quick take a look at the time series demand forecasting data set that we're going to use. This data set is hosted on Kaggle, and I created it. It's essentially a simulation that looks at de forecasting the demand of six restaurants in a beachfront setting. You've got time series data, natural language processing data, and computer vision data. Let's have a look at all three, and this data set, I have a link to it in the description. This data set exhibits seasonality and trend both, so that's something that you have to be aware of as you're trying to forecast into the future. Seasonality is the fact that you're seeing this go up and down based on the month of the year, and if you zoom in further, you'll see that there's even seasonality by the week. Trend refers to that this whole thing is increasing gradually over time, especially if you look at the peaks. You have a bunch of different items that you are trying to forecast the sales for, and you've got historic data as it goes into the future. There you see a bit better, kind of by week, you can see this product was clearly discontinued there, uh, but you, you need to forecast when a product discontinues. What, what is that going to do to the rest? Is it going to cause other ones to fill in the gap, or will that demand simply go away? The files are here. The primary one that you're going to deal with is this one called sales train, which is your sales over time. You can see the dates here, the item, which are those items that we were just looking at, the price that it was sold for, and how many items it was sold for that day. These are all of the days, and the items are unique to each restaurant. You don't have multiple restaurants selling the same item. They're very similar across some of the restaurants. The actual items are here. You have some information about them. They're in tabular form. Each item is sold by a particular store or restaurant, store ID, and the restaurants are here. For natural language processing, I recommend doing something, maybe not with the restaurant names, because there's not that many of them, but the item names, you could certainly use natural language processing to maybe extract some further information. There's also computer vision, which are these pictures that were taken at the street where the five restaurants are at, showing the number of people there. So you could use something like Yellow or other deep learning packages, computer vision packages, to count how many people. Both are on the beach and on the street, because they, those tell you different things. Things. I did run a Kaggle competition with this data set and some of my students at WashU. You can see the root mean square errors that these teams were able to accomplish, and some of their code is in the code tab. I'll also put a link to the Kaggle competition that I ran, Kaggle Community Competition. For this univariate prediction, we're going to use only the sales volume. We're going to ignore seasonality and trending, and these other things that we'll get into in later videos. Let's just see how we can do it just with a fairly naive neural network. So this univariate neural network, the input layer, we're going to take in one vector uh, that has a sequence of 30. That 30 is 30 time events, so 30 sales numbers. This is a sliding window that we'll see in a moment. Then we have one convolution layer, which has 64 filters with a size of eight. So within that window, there's another sliding window of eight that, go, that goes across as the one-dimensional convolution layer tackles that. Then we have a max pooling layer, which is basically a dimension reduction. It takes half of the dimension away from what the convolution layer does. And then finally, we flatten it to an output vector of 704, and then finally, a dense layer that is taking in that 704 and outputting just one, which is the, the predicted next value in, in the sequence. Now, that could be the very next day, so these 30 input, it could be day 31. We're going to actually do it considerably further into the, into the future, and we'll see why in a moment. Convolution layers typically look like this. This is similar to the structure that we have. This is from Jan LeCurn's original paper on this. The input is, is essentially a sliding window going across, 
For images, you have the filter that slides across. It goes both horizontally and vertically. We're just doing a 1D convolution for time series, so that goes only horizontally back and forth. And it just goes through a continuation of convolution layers and dimension reducing max pooling layers that we like you have here, and then finally to dense layers. We're only doing one layer of convolutions for this, for this neural network. Just to keep things simple, you might want to do additional layers for additional predictive power. This is what's typically done for images. The depth is the color, RGB, and then you've got the height and the width. For a 2D convolution, like we're using for time series, the time sequence is essentially the width, and the number of features that you have, in this case we're going to have just one, but later we'll put additional features into there, and you slide across predicting as, as time goes by. So that's the difference between these two type of convolutions that you see for images and that you see for time series. These convolution neural networks are used for both. And again, just to emphasize the dimensional nature of it, X, Y, and Z. X is the, the width, Y is the height, and then the image depth of colors. In 2D, you just have two of them, so it's X and Y only. The time sequence looks somewhat like this. Here we have time 1, 2, 3, up to 9. I'm showing what it would look like uh, for a 10 sequence, and then the next one would be, the one that you're trying to predict, would be T plus 10, or it could be much further into the future. Because we'll, we'll somewhat tend to use, say, first quarter of of the, the year that we had the data for to maybe predict first quarter in the year in the future. So we'll, we'll, we'll see some options there. So the link to this is in the description. And this first one here, the DS Beach Naive Forecast, this is the one that we're looking at in this video. More advanced versions of it we'll see in future videos. We begin, we begin basically by loading in the three CSV files that we just saw before. We're going to use this function in a number of the future videos showing how to convert the linear data like you get from the sales CSV file into series. And the series, your or sequences, you're going to get the data in. That's the that's the raw data that you've read from the, the lengthy file that has all the multiple years of time series data. Window is the size of the window that we're looking at. Ideally, you want it to be bigger than one. Uh, we're going to use, I believe, 30. We'll see the number down there. It's a constant. You can play around with that if, as you want to. Lag is going to be how far into the future we're predicting. Well, the, the data set, you, you might choose to predict the last quarter. So say you lop off the last quarter and that's what you're going to, to predict on. Whatever that lag is between where your data ended and where you're starting to predict, that is what this, this, this lag is. If you're trying to predict just the next day, then the lag is one. If you're trying to predict 30 days in the future, then the lag is, is 30. If you don't use a lag and you're just predicting one day in the future, then what you have to do is as your sliding window goes further and further past what you have, you have to start supplementing your, your prediction window with actual predicted value. Your neural network has to start to use its own predictions as it goes forward into time. So we're gonna join the items data with the sales tables so that we can look up the store ID for each item. Because each item is only sold by one particular store. That gets us the store ID, which we will use as a future feature to present to the, uh, to the neural network. We build the sequence data here. We're using a window size of 29, and the future span or the lag is going to be 30. So we're predicting one month into, into the future. So there's a lag of 30 values that we don't have between 
where the input data ends and where we're trying to predict off into the future. Again, you can set that as the next day, and then as you project it further into the future, you would keep adding your predictions onto the input of the neural network. We're going to remove any sequences that did not have enough data because as you, break, as you break into those 29 sequences, you're going to have some unevenness at the, at the end of it because your data is probably not going to fit perfectly into window sizes of 29. We drop all the other columns because we just want the sales column, like I, like I said. And then we are going to extract the labels. The labels are the, the sales at that 30 days in the future, or whatever you set your lag to be. We print out the size of the training and validation set because we're, we're doing a split of, of those two. And then finally, we break it into the actual X and Y, which are the numpy matrices that are going to be used to train the neural network. So for the training set, you've got 64,000 values, rows, 30 sequences, and in each of those sequence elements, we have just one actual value that is going into the neural network. So just the sales. We're using sales 100% to predict across all the items. We're not differentiating between the items. We construct the neural network. Uh, it's going to be constructed in exactly the configuration that we said before. We are using Keras for this example. PyTorch would be really very similar. Would you like to see a PyTorch example of this? Let me know in the comments. I'm starting to do more PyTorch, certainly on, on this channel. Then we set up an early stop and we track the history and we fit the neural network and it goes through the loss improves here, and once it gives up, the, the early stopping will kick in, and it will stop it will stop the train, literally. We end up with a root mean square of 7, and then a validation is a little bit worse at 8. And we plot the, cur the training curve. You can see the training loss consistently goes down. It's, it's somewhat erratic in terms of it, but the validation is, goes down much, much slower, and eventually we give up, and that is where we got our best training result. And that's essentially how you do this with just your basic convolution neural network, not dealing with seasonality, not dealing with trend. Neural networks do not do particularly well at all with trend because that's extrapolation, which we'll see in the next video. If you want to see more of this kind of thing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is an entire series that I'm doing on demand forecasting.